On this episode of Aftershock, Chris shows us how SGA prepped for this year's homecoming. Diego provides us some helpful tips on staying awake. And Zach gets us caught up with all things enlightening athletics. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Daniel Purcell. And I'm Taylor Fishman, and Aftershock starts now. One of my favorite parts about homecoming week is pep rally. Mine too, and every year two lucky students get to host the event. Here's Josie with a little bit more about one of those hosts. On October 6th, students from every grade gathered at the football field for the annual pep rally, which was co-hosted by Alicia Steinman. She was elected by SGA to fulfill this important role. How did you get chosen to be the host? Um, there, I got a text message and they asked me to come in and be like interviewed and kind of try out, so I went and I tried out. That's awesome! So how have, you, how have you been preparing for the pep rally today? Um, well, me and Alec are really good friends and we've just been like, we've been going to lunch and hanging out and we've been practicing our script and we went to go get our costumes yesterday, so just practicing. And are you confident that you'll do well today? Yeah, I am. I think we're really prepared. I'm really excited, but I guess I'm a little nervous that I'll mess up, but I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I think she's gonna do great because I know Alicia really well and her personality is like so the host. Like she's so like such a people person. She's gonna do amazing. And are you confident that she's gonna do well? Yep, very confident in her. <laughs> How would you describe her personality? She's definitely like the funniest person I know. Like everything she says, even if it's not funny, like she just makes it come out in a way that will literally crack you up. Like she's hilarious. Okay, awesome. And has she put in a lot of time and effort? For sure. I know she's been practicing a lot and she has her script down pat and it's going to be great. So are you excited for today's pep rally? Are we excited for the pep rally? We get them all the 9th, the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Boom! At the bay. <laughs> so have you worked with Alicia at all in preparing for the pep rally? You know what? She came in. She said, just chill. I'll take care of you. So I believe her. I'm chilling. She's a superstar. Superstars always rise to the occasion. Awesome. Thank you so much. Go Cypress! Woo! Woo! After weeks of preparation, the success of the pep rally showed that Alicia's hard work and dedication paid off. I'm Josie Clancy, CBTV. Litter. Trash such as paper, cans, and bottles that are left lying in an open or public place. Also known as a huge threat to our planet's environmental life. Captain Charles Moore, an oceanographer and racing boat captain, was the first to find the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Spanning from the coast of Japan to somewhere between Hawaii and California, this patch is twice the size of the state of Texas. You're probably wondering, hmm, what exactly is this Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Well, it is exactly as described in the name. It is a large pileup of marine debris and plastic. And yes, it is all our fault. But we can fix this major issue. It will take time, but if we all work together, we can have our slowly dying marine life back looking more beautiful than ever. One thing we can do is limit the amount of plastics we use on a daily basis and start using biodegradable items. Another thing we could do is raise awareness. Everyone must know about this issue and not enough news stations talk about this marine life threatening situation. For more information, you can go on www.theoceancleanup.com. Many people every year try to become homecoming king and queen. But only a few are selected to be on the homecoming court. Here's Julian with more. While most students were focused on Spirit Week or the actual game, some SGA members and students were working hard on another event, the homecoming court. We've been in a major time crunch because of this hurricane, so we've been trying to pick up the pace and get everything done on time. Our committee's been working really hard and we've prepared everything in advance. This year, SGA relied on the internet to promote candidates and conduct voting. 
The homecoming court typically consists of two royalty per grade level, a prince and a princess for underclassmen, and a king and queen for seniors. Unfortunately, none of the seniors ran this year, but that's okay because our court's still really great. All the freshmen, sophomores, juniors were really sweet and really gracious throughout the process. SGA announced the winners through their Twitter. The newly elected court was then able to pick an escort and get presented during halftime at the homecoming game. When I got out here and I came with my escort, it was just so much fun. And walking out onto the field and seeing all my friends cheering for me, it was just, it was really great. As Spirit Week comes to a close, CBH royalty is crowned. I'm Julian Bonilla, CBTV. Who's this? Who's this? My name is Bella and I'm six. Volun volunteer help the people. Because Bobby the Mash on they have to live here. My diet consists of at least two servings of fast food a week. Although that may taste good, it can lead to an increased chance of heart disease. SGA started to plan this year's homecoming. And many of the SGA students that were a part of the planning process were excited to see their final result. With homecoming season at its peak, student government has been working non-stop and SGA President Harrison Miller gave us an inside look on the process. Uh, this is my first time being in charge of homecoming. Um, usually the uh, president and the uh, treasurer of student government is in charge of homecoming. And you know, with me being the president this year, it's my first year actually being able to chair homecoming, which I'm so excited about. The process for homecoming, um, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little difficult at least for this year, just because the hurricane, we're kind of like a week and a half behind on everything. But um, here in student government, we are so lucky to have 100 of, 140 of the best members of the school, like in our class. You know, they all have their time management skills. They know how to work efficiently, and they just know what they're doing. And when they're given a task, they get it done when we need it to get done. It's just cool to see something you've been putting together for so long finally come together. Like, it's pretty cool. As homecoming week came to an end, Harrison and his team's hard work finally came together at Cypress Bay's homecoming. Christopher Lynch, CBTV. bunch of AP classes this year and I have so much homework that I only get two hours of sleep every night. Well luckily Diego is here on how to keep yourself awake on those long nights. Wake up sleepyhead. Nobody wants to be tired all day. Fortunately with my tips you'll be awake for sure. And my first one is going outside. Alright. Thanks, man. I'm feeling less tired already. Yeah, then I bet you'll love this warm cup of coffee right here. Oh, thanks, man. I love coffee. Ah! Well, my last tip didn't have its intended effect, but one thing that always wakes me up is a bucket of cold water. So, what do we do with you? The Cypress Bay Lightning took on their rivals, the Western Wildcats, in this year's homecoming game. For coverage of the game and much more, here's Zach with sports. The 
Lightning football team reached the halfway point of their season on September 28th against the Miramar Patriots, and I decided to catch the game for myself. Senior night for the Cypress Bay Lightning was held on September 28th as the team took on the Miramar Patriots in a district rivalry game. After a Miramar rushing touchdown early in the game, the Patriots scored again midway through the second quarter with this 38-yard pass to Terrence Horn to increase the Miramar lead. With Miramar threatening to score again, Andres Wolf denies Katravis Jeter a one-yard touchdown. But second time's a charm for Miramar as Jeter finally scores, giving the Patriots a 21-0 lead at the half. Early in the third quarter, Stephen Williams drops back to pass and hits Dominic Watt, who makes not one, not two, but three defenders miss for a 45-yard touchdown. But another look at the play shows Watt clearly stepped out. The play reminds Lightning fans of another missed call against Plantation, when the runner's knee was down on the two but still ruled a touchdown. Back to the Miramar game, the Patriots try to field goal in the third quarter, but it's blocked by superstar Ricky Malcolm. However, Malcolm was held with no touchdowns despite scoring in every Lightning home game thus far. Unfortunately for Cypress Bay, Miramar scored again at the end of the third quarter with a five-yard run by Jeter to seal the Miramar shutout 35-0. A week after the team's blowout loss to Miramar, the Lightning football team had their homecoming game scheduled against their rivals, the Western Wildcats, and Paula caught up with the team to see how they're preparing for the game. The week of the homecoming game, the football team was preparing for their biggest game of the season against their rival school, Western. Well, it's our no normal practice schedule. We don't want to change. Uh, we have three-hour practices on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We lift an hour before practice on Monday and Wednesday. And then, uh, you know, Thursday is our walkthrough. And then it's game day. This is the first time Western will play Cypress Bay in a homecoming game. It's a big rivalry. It's an exciting game. And then to be homecoming on top of it, um, it's a big game for us because we had a rough week last week. I think, uh, you know, this is a turning point for us. Players also have the same vision as their coaches by practicing all week. We're preparing just like every other game, you know, focusing, trying to make no mistakes this game. Uh, it's a big game. It's a district game. We already lost two, so we're going we to get this one right. Paolo Gutierrez, CBTV. After last year's crushing loss to Western, Tomas covered this year's rematch at Cypress Bay to see if the Lightning could get their revenge. The Cypress Bay Lightning took on their district rivals, the Western Wildcats, for the annual homecoming game at the Bay on October 6th. Lightning quarterback Marlon Serban scored early in the game to give Cypress the lead against Western 7-0. The Wildcats quickly responded, scoring a touchdown as well as a two-point conversion to take the lead over the Lightning. Early in the second quarter, the Wildcats offense increased their lead by scoring another touchdown. The Lightning's luck was unfortunate throughout the rest of the game, as they fumbled the ball in their next drive with the recovery by Western. In the second half, the Lightning had more trouble resulting in fumbles and interception and multiple touchdowns for the Wildcats. Ultimately, Cypress Bay lost their last home game to the undefeated Wildcats 48-7, with the Lightning falling to a record of 3-3. Three and three. Cypress Bay also played Western in girls volleyball, and while the match started an hour early, Nick was still there with the report. The Lightning girls volleyball team took on the rivals, the Western Wildcats, on October 5th. Although Cypress Bay got off to a great start, the Wildcats followed close behind them in the first set, 23-25. Thanks to Colleen Seinbold and her stellar offense, the Lightning won the second set, 25-23. In the third set, Cypress Bay took an early 9-point lead on Western, but the Wildcats soon caught up. However, the Lightning still won the set 25-21. In the fourth set, the Lightning continued to dominate the Wildcats and won the game 25-15. Their next game is against Piper on October 17th. There is so much happening in Lightning Athletics that we prepared a special and healthy treat to help athletes stay in shape.
While the football team has no more home games this season, they do have an away game tonight at South Plantation. That's all for this week's sports. I'm Zach Cohen, CBTV Sports. Hurricane Irma was nearly a month ago and it's still affecting places like Puerto Rico. Luckily, clubs like UNICEF are helping these people in these affected areas. My name is Andre. Uh, people lost their houses, their stuff. That's pretty sad. But people from the Caribbean join in to help. Because if it happened to me, I would want people to help. So I should do the same. That's all for this episode of Aftershock. If you want to watch previous episodes, you can find them at cyberspaytv.com. And while you're at it, follow us on Twitter at cyberspaycbtv. I'm Taylor Fishman. And I'm Daniel Purcell. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.